All right, I found this at the store and I uh, bought uh, several things. This was one of them. Um, I don't know if you can read this, but it says Narda and it says Microline, Microline trademark, the Narda Microwave Corporation, Plainview, New York, USA. This is a model 906N. Serial number 9011, and uh, it is very long, okay? And over here, it's got some end connectors, okay? Looks like a putter. <laughs> so um, it's got a female and, and a male uh, end connector on this side, so obviously you're gonna send a signal in. And then it's got this long pipe on this end, and uh, these things slide in and out. Now, there's something called a trombone, and people will say, oh, that's just a trombone. No, it's not. This is not. A trombone is a, um, um, a, a something for a future video. <laughs> I have one of those also. I'll be showing that. But uh, this one has two different slides. It has a, has a small diameter slide, and it has a large, a large diameter slide. And um, so, obviously, there's things going on inside here. And it's not a simple um, stub, tuned stub. People might say, oh, that's a tuned stub. No, it's not that either. This thing's quite complicated. And I've not been able to find any information out at all about this thing. I can't find a day sheet. I can't find a catalog it's in. I can't find anything. So if anybody out there has any information on this, please get in touch with me. I, I, I would love to, love to know about these things. Now, lucky for me, I bought two of them. All right, and um, the other one was in poor shape, and so I disassembled it, okay? And so, uh, let's see here, we'll start, we'll start on this end. Here's the goes in, the goes out, -za. and then it has this thing here, and uh, the tube used to go into here, and was, uh, it's this end here. So it came loose. It looks like it was soldered in, but it's come loose. So obviously this is an outer tube and this is an inner thing. And there's some rings of uh, insulators here. So when you put this tube on, it uh, is separated from the center conductor. So this acts as a coax, right? You've got an outer conductor and you've got an inner conductor, okay? And then that continues to go on the out, okay? Now, it gets more complicated, so let me, let me see, what's the best way to talk about this thing? Um, yeah, let's disassemble this part. Uh, we are going to take this off, and I'll show you this. So the, here's the conductor, and it just, it, it goes, and then it steps down in diameter. So we have um, a, section here, a section here, and a section here. Now this section does slide in, this section does slide in and out, okay? So that goes inside this tube. So what does it, what slides in and out? Well, there is a gap here, and I think you can see here, there's a thing that slides in and out, okay? So I kind of remember that. All right, so what's the rest of it? Well, it's this thing here. Well, it's a tube, okay? And uh, it has some um, RF grommet type connector types of things. And so when it slides on here, so I can do this without my buggering it out. Okay, so when it slides on here, it makes electrical contact with this conductor. And then, it, so it has little spring fingers that make electrical contact to this piece. And then they also make electrical contact to this piece. So. This is just a solid piece, and then this shorts out this piece to this piece. So now this really, this section right here really is a transmission line. It's just center conductor and outer conductor, and then this slides in and out. So yes, this is a stub, a tuned stub. So this, this, this part is kind of explainable. All right, so now that you kind of see the overall nature of this thing, let me show you some, some pictures that I've drawn in uh, Fusion 360 that will help you understand what's going on. Okay, we're gonna start with this one. So 
Uh, this is um, this, okay? So it, it, there's an outer conductor and an inner conductor. So this is the end connector thing, okay? And then there's this thing that goes off to the side and it, you can see that it's split. Okay, so the way that it works is <coughs> the center conductor of the end connector comes in and then gets connected to this piece, which you see a split. And so it goes up and it goes and does something and then it comes back down and then goes on its merry way. So the RF has to come in, it has to go up and then come back down and then go across. Okay. All right. So, and you can see the cross section here. These are actually, um, shaped like this. Okay. With a slit in it. Right. And then there's an outer tube, which is this thing. Okay. So these guys are these little inner things here. Right. All right. So, the way the bottom section works is uh, these two split sections here, uh, there is a slug in, there's a slug inside here, okay? And it has little fingers so it makes contacts, but this can slide up and down. And so this basically shorts, shorts out the two inner conductors on, in some plane, okay? So the, the radio, RF energy would come in, it would go up this conductor, and then it sees a short, it would go over, and then it would come back down, okay? So this can slide up and down, all right? And that's done by the, uh, by the little slide. When you slide the little thing in and out, it's, it's moving this plug up and down, okay? So that's what that one does. But there's still, it only, it's in the center. That little that little rod is in the center here, and there's still an open coax that goes up. Okay, and so I'm gonna show you a different drawing. So the open conductor is here, right? It, 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 it let's say it it's it's shorted out here somewhere, but there's still an open conductor and that an uh, open coax, and that still goes up here until it finally reaches some place where 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 there's a plug here where it moves up and down, and that's done by the big slide. So the big slide moves this plug up and down, and the little slide moves this plug up and down, okay? So hopefully that's all making sense now. So here's kind of the whole thing again. So uh, we go in, we go up, there's some plug that shorts it out and then it comes back down and around, but some energy is still traveling up that coax up to the top where, where it gets shorted out and it, that acts as a stub. So you've got this weird, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I think part of it acts as an inductor and part of it acts as a capacitor, you know, waving hands. One has a, a positive gamma, one has a negative gamma, and, and somehow they work together and allow you to tune. So this, you can talk about trans match, you can talk about an antenna tuner, you can talk about a gamma match, you can talk about lots of things, but it is converting one complex impedance to another complex impedance by using these two slides that act as a uh, some path in the complex impedances of the gamma, right? Uh, you know, R plus J omega type of thing, right? So you're moving you're moving on some paths when you, when you use this thing. All right. So yeah, it's pretty it's pretty fancy. So this. Uh, uh, and, and the cool thing is, see this, this rod, oh, it's very, very hard to, comp to com comprehend, but you can see the little, like the little rod slides in and out of the big rod, but there's a lock and you do this. Now these two are locked together. You can still slide this thing. Okay. But this relationship is now fixed or you can unlock this one and you can lock this one. And now these two things are locked together and this can move independently. So yeah, so there's two locks on it. I'm gonna show you the, 
the one that's all together. So there's a little thing here to grab. There's a lock here and there's a lock here. And then those two things slide in and out. And yeah, so let's put it on a VNA and see what the heck this thing does. All right, here's the VNA. Um, should trip the brightness a little bit, maybe a little bit. Um, so I've been, I've had it, I've calibrated it. And so I have a, uh, I have a load on it here. You see that the, screw the load off, it goes wacky. Um, and it is calibrated to some point, doesn't really matter what it is. And we have a nice match here at 50 ohms. All right, so I am sweeping the VNA from one gigahertz to 1.01 gigahertz. So I'm looking at just one point, okay? And so um, if I put on a 50 ohm, a 50 ohm load, okay, you can see that we're here at 50 ohms. And if I put on a 40 ohm load, I happen to have a 40 ohm load, I don't, don't ask me why. If I put a 40 ohm load, you can see that the point is way off way off to the side, okay? And um, if that were, let's say, an amplifier that we wanted to test, we really want to adjust the uh, system to be right at 50 ohms again. So we want, to, we want to match something to something, okay? So let's say, let's say this is the thing that we want to match, this, this weird 40 ohms, okay? So we are going to insert our tuner. This thing's actually called an EH tuner, E-H tuner from Narda. All right, so let me put this on here and let me put our 40 ohms on it. And so, uh, so now we have this, um, tuner in in series it goes it goes way up it goes way up there <laughs> uh, so we have this tuner now and you can see that our new complex impedance is way over here which is which is wrong okay so I am going to grab these slidey things and move them and you can see this thing here tra travels on an arc which is a uh, common uh, direction in uh, in a Smith chart, right? So we can slide this one right up, right up to here. Uh, let me go back on to here, here again. And uh, just, I'm not going to be real precise about this, but you get the idea that we uh, we can slide these two things here. Let me, oops. Now I've messed it all up. I had it real close and now I've messed it up. Uh, okay, there we go. Oh, that was perfect. Okay, so now I've adjusted those two slidey things so that we are right in the center again, okay? You can hit the SWR button here. You can see that we are just flat here at, at almost one-to-one -one SWR, right? Log mag, we're at minus 35, and we're right in the center of some stretch. So we've, we've, we've uh, if, we t if I take out that 40 ohms and I put the 50 ohm back in, uh, we can see that we're way off again because that's kind of the negative of this one. Okay, it has to counteract it. All right, so let's do something fun. Let's put in some complex impedance. I'm going to put in a, an, an antenna onto this thing. And this antenna was not designed for, for a gigahertz. So we have this really, we have this really awful spot here now. It's, we're way, way over here. And we want to have that at 50 ohms now, right? Um, and um, so, uh, we need to change our antenna, I mean our uh, transmatch here, uh, and let me adjust this one first. Let's see how it's moving. It's kind of moving in a weird direction. All right. And what I, so what I want the information of this thing for is really, in what directions is this thing moving? It's really hard to intuitively move these things. They don't move in normal directions that you might think, and it's kind of hard. Um, I've kind of uh, already done this one, so I'm going to set it to kind of a, a better starting location here. All right. And I'm going to move this top one here, and you can see that, oh, 
now we've got now we've got a nice arc and uh, let me come down over here and let's save right there okay so now I've adjusted those two sliders and now we have this arc here if you go to SWR you can see that we're at one frequency we're at one to one and then other frequencies would go up past two to one um, and uh, here's log mag uh, but yeah so and SWR is in concentric circles, so you could take a look at this, and you can see that over some range we have a good SWR as well. So different ways to look at SWR. Um, so there you go. Um, it does translate impedances. It is a tuner, um, and it's just a really, really weird one. And I really don't have a gut feel for how it works. It's got that split transmission line, and then the extra stub at the end. I really don't know how how it works. Um, let me show you one thing that maybe a, a somewhat of an insight. Um, see if I put that 50 ohm back on, and I start sliding these things. Uh, you can see that this the small slide kind of makes loops like that, and the big slide is making similar loops. So it's not intuitive of when you move one and when you move the other one. Um, yeah, see, now I'm back right back to 50 ohms again. So, uh, yeah, it's difficult to operate. All right, I'll show you this one's a little easier to read. Narda E-H tuner, it is 0.95 to 10 gigahertz. Um, yeah, so uh, so one gigahertz to 10 gigahertz. I have an odd, kind of an odd little device made in 1977. All right, I hope people out there can help me out to understand this thing. Um, we have a slotted line and we have a, 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 a we have a moving slotted line we have a, a moving stub those are used together yeah i just don't have a good gut feel for how this thing operates i know what it does i can use it i just i would like to know more